Joe Pegg, the Raw Podcast, show number 42, and tonight we have Sylvan Gentile, Gentile? Uh, Gentilly. Gentilly. I got his first name right that time, didn't I? Got it. Yes, you did. <laughs> I've been messing up his last name every time we talked, uh, but I finally got it, the, the first name right and, and messed up the last name. So tonight, hopefully Kathleen will be joining us a little bit later. Um, last week, we did not have a show. I'm getting a little bit of feedback from somewhere. Anyway, we'll keep going. Um, last night, we didn't have a show, Tim, but we did do a special thing. We did a hangout. We had two of the members from, from the, from the uh, Facebook group come and join us, and we had a hangout and discussed various things like Lightroom and, and ran through a couple of examples and Stuff like that is a, is a really good hangout, and it's something I want to do more, where we supplement the Facebook group and do a hangout, because it's it's so much easier to talk with each other during a hangout than it is you know to type in and and um, in the Facebook group and wherever else you can instantly ask questions, go back and forth, and you know show each other as you know live. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. So it worked out really good. It was. Um, I'm going to get the two names wrong, but it was Andy <laughs> and I think Jessica uh, who were out there with us. Oh, too bad I missed that. Yep. And you know, as I mentioned before, we're on Stitcher, we're on iTunes, we're now on YouTube also. And we're picking up more and more people who are listening to Stitcher. And tonight, I think we have at least one person who's always listened to us on Stitcher who's watching the live show and probably for, maybe for the first time seeing that we also have video along to go along with our audio. Because um, I mention every week uh, the Stitcher people, which if you know if you're like me, maybe you listen to your podcast in the car, so you're not really interested in video. But you know, sometimes you may be wishing, man, a photo show would be so much better with video. Well, we have it, so now you get to see the great photos for my guest uh, in a little while. You saw them in a pre-show if you did, if you were watching that. Um, we've also had a couple of great posts out in the Facebook group, and one of them. Um, was something that, that I had started. Actually, it started two weeks ago when Scott Green, at the end of the show, I don't know if you remember this, Tim, but at the end of the show, he said, hey, I, I don't think the auto the um, vibration reduction on a Nikon camera engages when you use back button focus. Right, I remember that. Yeah, and, and so many people are have heard of back button focus. So many people are using back button focus. I used it. I had switched because uh, you know soccer and whatever else. I had switched uh, a while back, you know, maybe five, six years ago, to doing that. That's all I did was back button focus. And for those, for those of you who don't know, um, back button focus. I, I got my camera right here. Let's see if I can put it up to my other camera. There's a little button. Whoops, sorry for that noise. A little button is right there. The AF slash on button that you can use that to focus rather than you, you know your shutter release right and that that way it, it separates the two and you can you know hold that down focus and only take the you know and, and maybe you have that off the center of the frame you can also move your your focus points around and and in that way you have the, the two separated I liked having the focus and the shutter button separated it was it was nice but what I've been running into was, especially with my 7200 lens, which is a, a nice, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a Nikon 2.8 vibration reduction lens. It should take good quality photos. But I kept running into issues with it where they didn't seem that sharp. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. They didn't seem that sharp. And I had, you know, instead of stopping down at 2.8, I was shooting at f4, maybe even f5.6, trying to do something to get a little bit more sharpness in those photos, and, and none of it was really working well. So la a couple weeks ago, when Scott Green said, "I don't think it's engage," I think it's not engaging the it, the uh, the vibration reduction until you hit the shutter button, and then what's happening is it's it's spinning it up or wh whatever the mechanics. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's engaging the the, the um, vibration reduction, and it's not settling down before you take the picture, and therefore it's impacting the, the picture. So I, I said, I'd never heard of that. So as soon as the show was over, I, I tested it out. And sure enough, and, and this is a D2X, so I'm not, not positive this is on every um, camera. 
and I think it's only Nikon, so it probably doesn't affect you, Tim, or any Canon shooters. And Sylvan's going to tell us if it, he has a D4, whether it affects him in just a minute. And this is a 7200 VR1 lens. So it's it's not the uh, the VR2, which I think, Sylvan, you have that, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I went out and shot a, um, a bunch of swim suits, uh, swim shots. My son's on a, high, on a swim team. Went out and shot those, and I shot everything at 2.8, and I shot it using only the shutter release. I had turned off the back button focus, and my keeper rate was three to four times what it normally is. Wow. I was shocked when I came home and started load, loading up those photos and said, oh, my God, look how sharp all these images are. And that's 2.8 versus what I was shooting at F4, maybe 5, 6 before. Um, and, and it is just a phenomenal difference. I think um, as much as I love back button focus, I may be going away from it completely. Well, I guess back button focus, then you're only going to need that on like portraits. But at that point, you don't even need it. Well, you, you know, and I guess you can, just, you can just move around your focus point. Just, I'll just use this focus point or that focus point. Right. I don't have to, you don't have to use the center one. That's kind of a, I mean, I was, the first time I used my friend's camera, I think he had a Canon with the back button focus. I was like, wow, I like this. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, wow, now, my camera don't have it. Yeah. Now, um, Sylvan, and correct me if I ever say that wrong again. Sorry, right, well done. <laughs> um, you have a D4 and you have the, the Nikon 7200 VR2. That's correct, yeah. When you and I talked, you were going to test it. Did you have a chance to test it? I did, yes. And you know what? It does not engage the VR function when you're, uh, you know, you're using the back button. However, as soon as you go to hit the trigger to take the photo, it will engage. The second your, your finger touches that okay. uh, slightest pressure, yeah, you, can hear it, you can hear it engage. So it, it works. When you hit the shutter button? Yes, with the shutter button. Yeah, and that's what was, that was happening to me. It didn't engage until it hit the shutter button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's the same thing with uh, with the newer lens as well, the VR2. Okay. And and do you ever use back button focus? I do not. No, I focus and recompose with uh, with everything. I mean, unless you're shooting something that's moving, I mean, I'll use continuous focus. Um, you know, and just place my my trigger point where I want it. You know, my focus point where I want it. But and uh, you know, I'll move it all around. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it's just all I'll focus and recompose. So it, so it really has not affected you because you're not using it that way. No, and I, I mean, I tried it. Um, I, I, you know, I tested it out, but it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think uh, a lot of people have used it. And if you're having any trouble, if you're shooting Nikon, and it, it, this really only impacts with a VR lens. So if you're not have, shooting with a VR lens, it's not an issue. Um, but if you, if you have any trouble with it, if you have a VR, Nikon VR lens and shooting, you know, of course, Nikon, and you're using back button focus and you're noticing any issues with your images not being sharp, you know, it may not be you. It may be um, something with the, the, the lens. Um, and, and even if you have VR2, it's not fixing it. So give it a try where you, it's, it's pretty easy. I was able to tell pretty easy. I could hit the, the AF button on the back, the back, back button focus, and it would not engage the VR, but as soon as I touch the lightest touch, like you mentioned, on the shutter release, you can feel it engage. You can hear it engage. And if that's what's happening, that could be your, your problem. So give that a try. I wonder if that's a design feature and what the reason for it is. You know, I don't know, because, uh, you know, everybody I've talked to that uses uh, Canon says it's not a Canon issue. So it's not what, you know, Canon doesn't do it that way. So I don't, I don't know why, you know, what it is with Nikon, but obviously, you know, I would think it's more of a firmware issue. So if they really thought it was a problem, they could issue a firmware up, update, and they could make it work if they wanted to. But now, Mike, we talked about also the fact that um, I mean, you're you're outdoor shooting sports, and you're having trouble, and you still want to shoot back button focus. Um, you know, they could try turning off that VR and uh, see if that see if that helps. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, obviously, if you're if you're out there shooting soccer and you got one five thousandths of a one, you know, one one thousandth of a second, or even exactly. one five hundredth of a second, you know, um, the V the VR is just getting in the way. You don't need the VR, right. and if you're shooting on a tripod, you don't need the VR. Um, it's only when you're shooting with with lower light. <clears throat> and you know, talking about that, what you're shooting without VR turned on down to what level? What's your seventy to two hundred? You know, unless it gets you know drops down to uh, you know under a hundred hundredth of a second, then um, you know that's when I'll I'll turn it on. Okay, and you know we've talked before on the show about 
you know, the, the ratio of focal length to shutter speed, where if, if you're shooting with a 7200 and you're shooting at 200, then you really need to have one two hundredth of a second or greater. I, I don't always hold it quite so steady, so I generally want a little bit more than that. But you have, you're going half of that. So it's obviously, you know, it's, it's different for each individual. That's just a general guideline. And you're able to, with your camera holding techniques, to get a much lower shutter speed um, at those higher focal lengths and exactly. still get a sharp image. Yeah, I mean, if the subject's not moving, then, you know, I mean, like we, do, we talked about before, you know, if you can get in a strong, uh, strong position of holding the camera and, you know, keep it steady, then you can be racked out at 200 millimeters and, you know, drop it down to 30th, 60th of a second, especially with that VR turned on, then it makes a big difference. Yeah, and of course, we're only talking about stopping your movement, not, not the subject's movement. So, right, exactly. You know, if you're shooting soccer, like, you, Tim, you were, your son was practicing soccer tonight, you know, you're not going to stop a soccer player at one one hundredth no, one one hundredth of a second. You're going to need something greater than that. Yeah. All right, uh, the next thing, and I, this is where I was really hoping Kathleen would come on, and I don't know if she's coming because she sent me a text that said, oh, my God, I completely forgot. Sorry, I don't know, 840. She said she'd be here. Hmm, 840. <laughs> 840. <laughs> Which time zone, ask her? <laughs> that, that, that must be California time. <laughs> You give her a week off, and this is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens there. But she recently bought an Expo Desk. And uh, I have, of her, of course, have heard of those for a long time, but I don't own one myself. Do either one of you guys own one of them? No, I had considered it, but I have not purchased one. Okay. How do you, Sylvan, how do you, Sylvan, uh, how do you uh, white balance? You know, I just, um, obviously, I'm, just, I'm using a, the camera settings themselves, um, you know, if I'm in a studio, then I'm shooting with uh, flash white balance and, you know, um, adjusting from there in post-production. Okay. Um, and it's something I, I, would, I wouldn't mind getting is, is one of those things. They're not that expensive, although they do, they generally, I think they screw on the front of your lens. Or you can get one that's bigger, like as big as your biggest lens, and then you can just put it in, you know, hold it in front of your lens versus screwing it on. Because otherwise you have to buy, buy one for every... Um, Every one of your camera, your lens sizes, the, the you know the front of the lens, uh, the millimeters on the front, and uh, all you do is sit it on there, and I think you point it into the light that you're going to shoot, and then that you can set your white balance off of that. And Kathleen has got one this week, and she's been just totally excited about it, really loving it. And we're actually working with the um, the people who make it to maybe come on the show sometime, Tim. That's good. Yeah trying to get them to come on the show, and, and, and they have a lot of other products. So, and, and Kathleen started something off. I think she's convinced three other people to buy them. Uh, <laughs> so she started a little spending spree there on the site. And if you think about buying them, you know, uh, you know always go to, out to JPEG to Raw and click on the Amazon link, any Amazon link. Go to Amazon and then buy it off of there, and the show gets a little bit of credit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And then Anne, um, Anne out in, I don't have her name right here in front of me. Um, but Ann put a, a, nice show, a nice post out there on ShootProof. Years ago, I used to use a service called Print Room where I can upload my photos. Uh, I generally had pre-edited them, uploaded them, and people can go there and buy them straight from there. And it's sort of like a smug mug. You, know, you can go there and you can buy them from there, and, and they fulfill the order. And she's using something called ShootProof that she's really excited about. So I would you know, go check that out. You, she has a post in the Facebook group where you can check it out and, um, you know, Get some more information on it and what she what her thoughts are on it. The the last thing and this will lead us into the guest tonight is somebody I posted. You know I've been shooting for um, I've been shooting for a couple of years and I'm struggling to develop a style. You know I, I my images all look all over the place. They don't look the same. They you know I don't feel like somebody can look at my photos and say that is mine. So when you know yours. Um, I'm always afraid to say your name because I'm afraid I'm going to say it wrong again. <laughs> Sylvan. Sylvan. Yeah. Sylvan. Yeah. There, is, I do, there does seem to be a style. How long did it take you to develop a style you know, that, that you're comfortable with, that you were able to continuously reproduce? Is that something you had right from the beginning or is that something that you had to develop over time? No, I don't think so. You know, I mean, that's definitely something that takes time. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain. It just... It really just happens. It just develops, you know, as you um, as you shoot more, you know, you um, 
you know, you start developing a certain uh, certain technique in which the way you light an image and, you know, especially your post-production as well, um, that plays into it as well. So it definitely, it takes a, it takes a while. Um, it took a couple of years, so. And, and um, how do you, you know, sometimes people feel like I'm getting... I'm getting stagnated. I am, you know, all my images look the same. I have no new creativity. How do you balance no new creativity versus a style of your images and, and not like having them? While you want them, you want people to look at them and say, you know, that is my photo. You also don't want people to say, you know, they all look the same. Right, right. How do well, you I mean, balance those two? That's going to come down to, um, you know, obviously using the same, the same uh, techniques that you do on every shoot, but yet, um, you know, just trying to see, see things differently. You know, look at a look at a scene differently. Um, use a different composition. Use a different lens. Use different focal lengths. Um, you know, definitely that plays a that plays a role as well. Okay, and I know you love your seventy to two hundred, and you and you generally shoot a lot at at two hundred. Uh, you, know, uh -huh. you almost treat it. You almost treat it like a um, a fixed focal length at two hundred, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'll keep that thing at two hundred if I can, um, and I'll physically run back and forth between the subject and you know move around that way as opposed to uh, zooming in and out. And, you know, you, we had talked a little bit about it in a pre-show, but why is it that you like to leave it at 200? Well, I mean, your, um, your depth of field, um, especially if we're shooting at, you know, 2.8, then, uh, you know, your depth of field is just going to melt away. Yeah. Um, your subject's going to pop from the background. It's going to look th more three-dimensional. Um, and then also, uh, you know, your, what's behind your subject, um, not only is it going to melt away, but also, say there's a building, um, you know, a wall of some sort, something in the distance. If you're at 200 millimeters, it's going to look, you know, I wish I had an example to show you, but, um, you know, it's going to look like it's, you know, right behind them as opposed to, and it could be the farthest, farthest thing away. But, you know, if you're at 200 millimeters, it's going to compress the background and it's going to be right there. Yeah, that was the term I was thinking of, is, is compresses the Yeah, background. I mean, there's, there's shots that I've done, um, you know, here in San Francisco uh, with the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. And, um, you know, if I can get far enough away from the subject and zoom in to 200 millimeters, that bridge looks huge. But, yeah. you know, if I was lazy and, I, you know, just pulled back it, you know, pull the camera back to 70 millimeters, then, you know, it's going to look like it's a million miles away. Yeah. Okay. So 7200 is one of your favorite lenses. Uh, you know, what, do you have another favorite lens? Um, you know, I use my 50 one four a lot. Um, Ooh, 50 yeah, I mean, 4. 24, 70, that's a staple. Okay. Um, yeah. And, uh, and what, you know, what are, are the, is that Nikon? You shoot Nikon? All, all Nikon, all Nikon glass, yeah. Okay. And uh, you probably had the new D4, right? Yeah, and D3. <laughs> D3S as well. D3S, okay. Excellent cameras. Um, all right, and we talked about this in the pre-show too. You, you like to shoot raw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I shoot everything, everything raw, regardless of how big the job is. Yeah, and I know, you know, you know that's a debate on, um, I think most people think, no, most people know that raw offers more ability to post-process, raw offers, you know, more colors, Raw is not comp not as compressed. You can't shoot raw compressed, but it's not as compressed, as, and it's generally a lossless compression. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, but you know, some people don't think it's worth the extra storage, the extra headache. You know, if you have Lightroom, it's fairly easy to deal with the raw files. Um, but if you don't have Lightroom, you know, it may not be as easy. And uh, you also hear people, let's say you ran out and got the new Mark Canon 5D Mark III uh, or the new D800 or the D4. And maybe your raw software didn't even accept the raw files at first. Did you run into anything with that? No, because I mean, uh, Lightroom was on the ball, and I got they got the updates out pretty quick. Yeah. So, so I, even I, if, I think it sends out. Okay. So even if you did, uh, it, you know, they're going to be they're going to quickly. That's one of the things they do a lot of uh, Adobe does is release Photoshop and Lightroom updates to for new cameras because every raw, even raw specs within the same brand. Are different for each camera, in some slight way. So you know we've 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 talked a little bit about here, but we haven't actually talked about you too much. And how did you get started into photography, and how long you've been doing it? Uh, I've been I've been shooting photos since I was 14 years old. Uh, my dad's actually a professional photographer, and I you know, had the opportunity to work with him at a young age, and you know he gave me a, a lot of insight and knowledge that a lot of people don't get, you know, right off the bat. Um, so, I mean, we were, we were discussing shutter speeds and f-stops, you know, when I was a freshman in high school. Um, and then from there, um, you know, I shot my friends, uh, you know, wakeboarding, snowboarding, um, shooting professional um, events um, in extreme sports. And then from there, uh, you know, going into shooting portraits and engagements, weddings, and now commercial. 
Now, uh, wakeboarding, were, were you on the back of a boat uh, trailing, uh, leading the guy? Yeah, you'd either be in the, the back of the boat, you know, shooting from the boat while the rider uh, is riding behind you, or, um, I mean, we'll even have a, a chase boat is what it's called, and, you know, we'll okay. be behind the, the rider in another boat shooting. Now, I, I imagine you you got to have some pretty high shutter speeds, one to, to stop the action of the, 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 the guy, the person doing it, but also yeah. to, to, you know, level out your, your motion. Right, exactly. And if you're on a, you know, the boat's moving, um, so you got to hold it steady, obviously. So there's there's a lot of throwaway shots. Yeah. But um, you know, then you get that one keeper that's that's there. But I mean, if you can get your shutter speed over, you know, four hundredth of a second, you know, I'm I'm stopping images that are moving pretty fast. Really? So even just four hundredth of a second, you're able to stop. Six fortieth. Yeah. I mean, um, it doesn't take. You know, if you get that, I mean, there'll be slight. Like I said, there'll be a couple throwaways, and then you get that one image that's that's perfect. Now, what about the vibration from the boat that you're on? I mean, I would think that's also going to be uh, something you have to compensate for. And, and 400 is pretty, uh, yeah, not, pretty low. I mean, not, not too much. I mean, obviously, you know, if it's if it's a sunny day, I've got my shutter speed a lot faster than that. But, um, you know, as it starts getting dark, you know, we start we start dropping down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, with the D3S and the D4 are, are excellent with noise. Exactly. It, we talked about that the other night. Yeah, that's, way better than my old D2X. <laughs> I mean, I have no problem, you know, shooting at 6400 ISO. Um, which I did actually just the other night. Um, I was in a church and it was pretty dark. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the you know, I didn't want to use a flash to disturb anybody, and you know, the subjects aren't moving at the altar, so I was hand holding at 200 millimeters, 30th of a second vibration reduction on, you know, 6400 ISO. Wow, that that is awesome. So now you're doing, you do what do you say like 35 to 38 weddings a year? Uh -huh. yep. And uh, is that would that be the pr your primary? Um, you know, subject that you shoot, your primary thing you do for business, or right now, yes, yeah, for the most part, it's um, yeah, ninety percent of my work's still weddings, and then um, you know, transitioning still into uh, into doing more commercial work. Okay, and we got some of your images here. Let me see if I can start pulling up some of the images, and we'll have them playing as we're talking. Um, yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna try this. We'll, you, it'll take a second for it to come up. We're gonna try it this way, Tim. This is a new way. We got the image, the main thing, and then us down here in the lower corner. Okay. That way we get more on the image. Um, and they're, they're in a slideshow, so maybe I should just stop them. And you want you want me to pull up the ones you sent me? I mean, if you want, I mean, the ones you grabbed are, are good too. Those are fine. All right, let's let's. I need to stop the show. <laughs> stop the uh, the slideshow, so we just have that. Oops, that's not going to work. There we go. All right. Now, the one thing I noticed uh, when I was going through your photos is the the light is just always so powerful. The, you know, we all we all hear that. You know, I think anybody who's a photographer hears it's the light, it's the light. You know, it's obviously other things, but I look at your images and it's just absolutely fantastic. You're doing a great job of balancing the the um, ambient light, and I, I imagine here you had some kind of flash that you're also using. Right. Yeah. Sure. I mean, this image. Yeah, this image right here. We're using a. Uh... Um, I mean, I was in the water, so I took an Alien V1600 out and, and used a uh, small softbox, um, 24 inches, and you know, shot directly into the sun as it went down. I mean, this image was a lot brighter in the background, um, so I'm, I'm overpowering the sun right here. Yeah. So, is this what time of day? What time of day is this? Like uh, sunset or sunrise? It's sunset. Okay. Um, but that sun is still still pretty bright out there. Um, oh yeah. So I mean, it's a uh, I think my uh, my f stop on this image was probably about f either f eleven f thirteen, so okay. it's still pretty it was still pretty bright. And um, so you brought an alien bee out there. I guess you had some battery a battery pack for the uh... yeah. I've got a portable battery. Okay. In a backpack, travel around with me. Yeah. Hopefully he's not plugged in well in the water. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and you said alien bee sixteen hundred. Uh -huh. so yeah, so that's probably more that's more powerful than what you would be able to do with you know something like. Something like this, the yeah, the speed the, um, light, the speed light. Yeah, you're not going to overpower it. I mean, even if you shoot one to one, yeah, you're not going to you're not going to get that. And and, you, and this is something we'll see as we go through several of these. Is the uh, you know again the light the light is so powerful here. The colors are so rich too, and the the rim that is created around the people with the light behind them. I mm -hmm. love that too. I do this on. You know, this is during the first dance um, at a wedding I actually shot just last week. Um, so this, I was editing the images today, and uh, 
that's when I shot that over to you this afternoon. But um, yeah, during the first dance, I'll always, uh, you know, I'll have an assistant or a second shooter, um, you know, getting those those uh, nice evenly lit photos that are going to be, uh, you know, what mom and mom, dad and grandma want, you know, and what they're used to. But then my clients are looking for something more dramatic. So this is a uh, this is what we do. Um, you know, I'll have a speed light behind him, illuminating him. This was probably like one eighth, um, you know, power. And then uh, I'm shooting at f2 with my 50 one four. Okay. I'll say, I mean, I've seen a lot of wedding pictures. I don't know if I've ever seen one like this. And I, you're right, dramatic. This is a great shot. It and really I mean, you sets could still, them... You can still see the, you know, the expression on the face. That's what's important as well. I, I think that adds to the picture perfectly. Yeah, it does. You can still see the expression on the face. Um, it, yeah, I love that. And you're saying this is, this is uh, how fresh is this? You just shot this this past weekend? I just shot that last week, yeah. Last week? Wow. Yeah. So this one's not even up on your website yet. No, I posted uh, this sneak peek to Facebook when I emailed this over to you today. And okay. Yes, yeah, so it just just got up. Yeah. Um, so tell us about this one. Uh, that's just natural light. Um, you know, shooting into the window, using a bright, um, you know, a lot of light to hit just the side of her face there. Um, so you can also get a little, uh, a little bit of light right there on the side of her, and pretty almost a silhouette, but. But there's a lot of light pouring in that window. Yeah. So how are you? How are you picking your locations? Um, do you have some set, some places you always go to? Is it different for each each couple? It's it's different for each couple, and you know that's that's a big thing, especially when you start shooting at the same venues. Um, when it comes to weddings, uh, you know you want to be able to uh, keep it fresh and creative, and you know that keeps me motivated by finding new locations as well. I mean, I've got uh, you know the staple locations that I always go to, but yeah, I always try to try to create something different, something new for each couple. So, in a, in a shoot like this, how long uh, how long does a shoot like this normally last with a couple? Well, this this right here, this is on yeah. the wedding day. So on the wedding day, okay. Yeah, I mean, so we've you know got an hour and hour and a half um, together before uh, before the ceremony. Okay, so do you typically want the uh, the bride and groom to see each other before the the wedding? Always, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the typical thing I hear is, yeah. you know, look, I know that's kind of. Uh, old tradition, but if you want some good photos, we need to do this. Right, do this exactly. Plan. And it and goes that, by so fast, so it's it's a matter of you need to you need to plan ahead and you know be able to give your photographer some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you run into many um, crazy moms. <laughs> Fortunately, no. Um, you know, I guess I've, I've been lucky. That seems to be an also <laughs> common theme that the you know uh, mother-in-laws are sometimes um, a little overbearing. Yeah, no, um, everybody's, uh, you know, over the last few years, everybody's been very cool. I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty lucky. I have some great, some great clients. Now, in this image here, I, I, I again, I, it doesn't, it doesn't look like HDR, but it almost has some of the qualities of HDR. Just the, the, the richness of the photo is, is incredible. What, did you do anything special with this one? No. It was, can, it was, can you even tell if there's even a flash use here? No, there's no flash use. Um, that's it was raining that day, so um, they really were out in the uh, in the rain with the clouds, and it was pretty stormy. Um, if you saw the images on my blog that go along with this post, yeah, they, uh, the sun broke out after the ceremony for about ten minutes, and we were able to get some images, you know, with some nice, nicely lit photos. But um, for the most part, most of their images have a dramatic sky like this. Well, hey, that they actually you use it to your advantage, right? I mean, you got to you know play the cards you're dealt. And, you, know, you can't can't pick and choose when you want to shoot because you're on their schedule. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know that is um, to me the sign of a pro that, hey, I got to shoot to do the wedding's going to happen. I'm going to use this uh, situation to my advantage, and still you came out with just fantastic photo. Heck, this, this is this I is don't a good know, example. Oh, good. I, I don't know. To me, you know, obviously I'd have to see the others to be the a judge for, for me personally, but I don't know how you, this could have been even any better. I love this shot. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, uh, the best of uh, rainy weather, that's for certain. Yeah. And this is a good example of using a 200 millimeter, um, you know, the 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters, uh, just, you know, have the mm -hmm. subject pop off in the background. Yeah, you can kind of see the compression in the background. So I mean, how you far away? Yeah. I'm sorry. So how ahead. far away from them in this, in this picture then? I mean, 30 I'm, feet? Uh, Roughly, yeah. Um, I'm far enough back to uh, to frame it like that. Yeah. 
So, I mean, there's no, there's no cropping in post-production. That's, that's how I shot it. And I try to do that with all my images. Um, I try to shoot it the way that, that I want it to be, um, as opposed to trying to crop later. Mm -hmm. I tend to, I try to do that too, although I'm not getting this kind of photo. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another, now this one does look like it was flashed. Yes, this was, uh, um, up on the top of the hill okay. on their wedding day. Um, same setup as the, uh, the boat. Pretty close on um, softbox, small softbox, um, battery powered scrub. Okay. Yeah, and, and the balancing of the ambient light with the flash really gives a nice look to the photo. Yeah, I mean, you got to be able and, to bring out those those tones with the sky, because um, yeah. you know the sun was the sun was setting, so you didn't want to uh, kill the ambient light completely, but you know enough yeah. to uh, still bring it out. This is uh, this is one you sent me, and it's also one that I picked uh, myself when I was going through it, because I, for one, I, I blue is my favorite color, so you got that blue in there, and of course the smoke and the way the the smoke is lit, and then if you, I don't know how well this comes through the to chat, but the bottom of it almost has a um, tilt shift look. Exactly. Yeah. So how how did you make? And I did use I used tilt shift with this. Um, okay. Well, the way it's lit, uh, you know, there's a stand behind her, a light stand, and mm -hmm. uh, it's just an SB800, um, you know, fired remotely with a pocket wizard, and I'm shooting at 1.4 right here, um, and 600 or probably 6400 ISO. It was really high. Yeah. yeah. There's, this, there's, there's no there's no light on her face. There's no light on her face. Yeah, I'm not I'm not using a, a strobe or or an SB800 on her face. It's just the light behind her. But her face looks very well lit. I mean, you can see the eyes. You can see yeah. the face. I mean, the arms are well lit. Everything's well lit on the front. That's yeah. with the uh, the flash behind her. Um, you know, you don't always have to have your flash hitting the subject. Um, that's something that that I was I picked up a while ago from a from another photographer. Um, and you know, if you can put the flash behind someone, you're going to get light still going to wrap around. So, what's your exposure sitting on something like this then? Uh, that's going to be that's f one four. Um, 6400 ISO, um, and I believe it was 1 60th of a second. Okay. So the 6400 is really yeah. helping also. Yeah, it might have been like 125th, but I don't have the specs in front of me. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Oh, that, that's that's incredible. And you just used the SB800, which I have right here. Uh, How come my SB800 doesn't take photos like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably, a, I think it was quarter power, you know, directly behind her head. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, oh, directly you. behind us. So yeah, there is some uh, flash pop off right there because it's so close. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Correct me if you're wrong, but you know, light is especially artificial light um, added like this is can create such a dramatic and, and good image, but it does add complexity to it. And we've talked about this many times before, Tim. Is and it's something I need to do personally because I don't do enough of it. Is the only way you get better at it is to go out and and test. Yeah, you know, go out and shoot. You're gonna make mistakes and just keep doing it until you get better. And and heck, use somebody like Sylvan. Use somebody like his. Look at his images, and um, you know, try and am, am I getting the, the quality he is? Look at what he's doing. See if you can figure it out. Uh, I don't know if you do that, but I know a lot of photographers. You know, you, you get some of your inspiration from other photographers, and in you know, you don't necessarily develop exactly their style. But if you're wanting to know how well you're doing, look at somebody like this and uh, get your inspiration from that. Don't get s discouraged. I'm sure at least at age 14, you weren't taking this kind of quality photos. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not. I mean, like you said, it takes practice, and it does. Um, you know, it takes a while to. Uh, you know, I mean, there's so many shoots. You know, that were just test shoots. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going out and figuring out my settings, and you know, coming back, you know, running back to the house and putting them on the computer, and you know, seeing what I did, what I did wrong. How I um, you know, should have opened up. I should have you know, slowed my shutter speed down to allow more ambient light, and you know, and so forth. Or, or I should have killed the light more. You know, just to, just to try to figure out exactly what you should be doing in camera. Now, th this is uh, I'm guessing this is not a engagement or a bride shot. No, this is a uh, this is a singer songwriter uh, music shoot. Okay. So just a um, an album shoot. So it's probably pretty good to know what you're doing before you go out and get with somebody at this caliber. Yeah, I mean. You, well, that's the thing too. I mean, you want you want your your client to have faith in you. Um, so right. if you're, you know, you definitely if you uh, can move through the shoot and have your settings dialed in and you know, be able to produce images, you know, right off the bat, 
and then show them those images as, you're, as the shoot's going on. You know, they're going to have more confidence in you, and you know, you're going to have an even better shoot because they're going to feel more comfortable. I'm just playing a few as we're talking. Um, these are, I, I, you know, the one thing about this producer thing that I have, it doesn't give you names, so I can't name them, but I think these are the engagement photos. Uh, mainly, the ones that I pulled. Yeah, those are those were shot in Chicago, so uh, it's got a nice downtown feel right there. Like this yeah. image. Yeah, and I, I love the mix of the black and white one that was in there just a minute ago. Um, so, so your main thing is enga the engagement photos. Oh, I love this one too. The, and I'm I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, so you don't see it quite as soon. But then you see the black and white one. Oh, this so, is great. Yeah, the black and white yeah, one. So let me go back to to that black and white one. And you notice that right after that, I had picked the colored one, and I couldn't decide which one I liked better. When I saw the black and white one, it was I said, "Oh, I love this photo," so I picked it. And then I think the very next one I came across was the color version, and I go back and forth on it because I love, I, I like black and white photos. Um, so I, th I think if I had to pick the two, I like the black and white one over the other one. How are you processing your black and whites? Um, I mean, I'm using a. Uh... I'm just using Lightroom, um, and I'm creating custom black and whites based on the uh, the image. Uh, you know, so I'll convert it to black and white. And uh, a little trick I have is, you know, I'll play with the white balance, um, you know, as well. And then, uh, you know, we're just adding some contrast and, and making the photo snap. And this is what you uh, this is what we come out with. So are you are you uh, adjusting the white balance after you've converted the black and white? Yeah, you can um, you can adjust it. And you're going to see the tall range change um, with the reds, yellows. Okay. Have you ever uh, used something like Silver FX Pro from Nick? You know, yeah, I've downloaded the uh, the trial version and messed around with it a little bit. Um, you know, it's I, and that's great. Um, you know, and if you know, a good thing that I just picked up recently um, was Alien Skin. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the black and whites in there are really cool. It's going to give you a film film type effect, um, and that's that's kind of a, a new thing I'm doing now. Well, I, I have to say, if you're getting this good of quality uh, just from Lightroom, you know, just and you can you can get great quality from using Lightroom without Silver Effects. I, you know, I'm not sure how much silver effects is going to help you because you're already getting, you know, at such great quality. And here's the co uh, colored version of the, not the exact same shot, but in that same general area. Oh yeah, same same location. Yeah. And I, I'm going to imagine these are taken with that 200 millimeter setting. Yes, yeah, at 200 millimeters. Yeah, I mean it compresses the background really nice. Yeah. So one of the questions out in chat. Sorry, Jerry. I don't know how long ago you posted that, but I I just now saw it. Is uh, are any of these on tripod or are you hand holding? No, I'm hand holding everything. I don't. I hate tripods. <laughs> Unless I'm shooting a cityscape and it's nighttime and you know we're doing a timed exposure, uh, that's the only time I'll use a tripod. Yeah, I, I imagine it's kind of difficult because you're probably moving the people around. You're moving around, uh, trying I'm, to. I'm moving stuff. all over the place. I'm I'm on the ground. I'm you know shooting up the subject. I'm you know running all over the place trying to get the uh, the perfect composition. Yeah, you're right. The perfect composition and the perfect angle of the light. I imagine yep. at your caliber now, you can walk on a scene and, and pretty much, you know, know I need to be in this general area and, and narrow that down. So somebody newer may want you want to try different angles, both um, you know, moving from side to side, but also up and down to find where that light's coming in and giving you that good look. As yeah, we go exactly. through yeah. as we go through more of your shots, you'll see or we'll see. That the the placement of where that light is behind a subject uh, is is just critical, and the colors again are just fantastic. They pop. They really do. Yeah. What what are you doing to them to make them pop so well? Are you adding like vibrance or anything to these pictures in Lightroom? No, no. Um, you know, I try to get my exposure and you know everything dialed in in camera. Um, and yes, I'm shooting raw. So I mean, when I bring it in, it's just the standard uh you know the standard Lightroom uh, import function, and I'm not doing any custom custom uh. uh settings or anything, but it's a matter of, uh, you know, bringing in, you know, a nice vignette on the outside of that image. Um, yeah. And, you know, and like always, starting with a good, good quality photo from the camera, it just makes the editing that much better. I mean, you're not going to, you can't, you can't start with a bad image and end up with a good one. I mean, it's right. just not going to, it's not going to happen. Again, the, the colors just pop here. It looks like a little bit of vignetting around the edges. Do you, do you add any vignetting to your images? Yeah, I, I, I almost always add um, at least some vignette. Some images more so than others, but there's always always at least a little bit. Um, you know, I'm trying to bring the, the viewer's eye directly to the subject. I, I like a little so bit of that, too. I like to add a little bit to mine. And that's part of, like you said, you know, developing your own style. Uh, that's, that's something that I, have, I can identify with now and you know, 
it's pretty much on every image. Yeah, because you know ultimately, um, oh, and see, I pulled that one too. So I had, I had pulled one of the same ones you did. Ultimately, you got to and hey, I pulled another one. We had, look at that. I had some of the yeah. same ones you picked. Like, I, on the same page with that. Yeah. Okay, let me stop it on that one. I, should, I need to do it this way. This is uh, one of those where the, the light, the sun, I guess, you can't see where my mouse is pointing, but you can see where the <laughs> sun is coming and how the background is blown out. So here's one of the things I typically do, and, and uh, I'm still developing my style. And I'm not a pro. You know, Everybody who listens to the show knows I'm not a pro, so I, I don't have to worry about clients. But you still want to get good photos. So one of the things when I do in bring it into Lightroom is I have the red, the, 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 the white and the black clipping warning turned on. So typically when I see red in a photo and, and it would highlight it red where the clipping happens, I, oh, let me go to highlights and pull it back. Oh, let me go where you see a little bit of blue because it's um, the blacks have clipped. I try and pull that back a little bit too to bring that in. But, you know, hey, that's not, that's not what you want on every photo because you let the, you let the, the background blow out in some of this yeah you know that's that's funny you said because when I just a few years ago even um, you know I was doing the same thing that you just explained to you know, I'd come in and I'd look at that and I'd say oh you know I need to bring the you know worry about bringing in the blacks and not losing detail there um, or oh let's bring the recovery you know the, when they have the recovery slider before mm -hmm. you know, layer three and you know, I'd slide that all the way over to try to save the highlights in the sky but you know why you don't you don't need that detail um, exactly. and I feel like, yeah I mean it's 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 gonna kind of muddy the photo a little bit and it's just not going to pop the same. So I mean, now it's now it's a matter of I'm not worried about you know that that sky out there. I mean, if I was, then I would have hit him with a you know a flash of some sort, you know, and I would have gotten a darker background. Well, and what makes to me what makes this is is and what it, how it works for me is they are ex excellent exposed. I mean, you you can see the detail there. That's 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 great. The trees are, you can see enough details, you know, some of it in, near the sun kind of blows out, but even further down, not the trees that are closer to them, but the further down trees, you can still see the trees. So it's, it's different if like the whole sky was blown out. That, right. that probably would not have made this image. To me, being able to see, and even the trees, now I'm looking at the trees that go along the side as they kind of go out and, and kind of fade into the blowout, um, that you're using that to the advantage of the image. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I'm more concerned with not losing um, all the detail in the blacks, especially, you know, in this situation here um, on his, because he's, he's wearing black, obviously. Um, you know, I want to see a little bit of detail there, but you know what, if it makes the image better, you know, more dramatic to, to lose a little bit of that detail in the back of his jacket, then, then so be it. Um, as long as, you know, we have a good, ex you know, a proper exposure on their face and their skins, mm -hmm. or their skin tones, um, then that's, that's all good. And, you know, also a lot of times you hear, especially like, you know, Tim and I who did a lot of soccer shooting, is rarely is an image that shows the back of a person, um, you know, the, the image. You, you don't want to see the kid running away with the ball. But that is more of a, I guess, a loose rule. And, you know, rules are meant to be broken. Because to me, this, if they were walking toward us, a whole different image that probably is not nearly as good. The fact it's, that they're walking away. Yeah. yeah. That kind of makes the image now. Exactly. Yeah, you, know, you have to be able to tell a story, and you know, this lets the viewer, you know, imagine. I mean, they, they're looking at this image, you know, wondering, well, well, obviously, you know, it's their wedding day; they're walking away, and you know, give them some, give them some thoughts about it. You you mentioned that you do a lot of work in, in Lightroom. How, what's your uh, Lightroom Photoshop? Do you use Photoshop at all, or is I it do. all Lightroom? Yes, um, it's it's Lightroom to Photoshop. Yeah, um, you know, the images, you know, I process them initially in, in Lightroom, and any image that needs to be, you know, for the website or blog or Facebook, you know, that's what's that's what's going in Photoshop. Okay. So you would go out and let's say this this couple is this wedding day also. This is yes. Okay. Oh, and let's let's maybe talk about a well a, a wedding. Okay. So you go out there and obviously that day's blown because you're either getting ready for the wedding, shooting the wedding, or recovering from the wedding. Um, after that, what's your what's your typical? How many shots would you take on a wedding, and how long does it take you to edit those shots? I mean, I'm myself alone is I mean, I'm shooting over four thousand images on a wedding day, um, four to five thousand, four to five thousand <laughs> images. Yeah, you know? and then uh, my assistant usually averages, um, you know, she usually averages fifteen hundred to two thousand images herself. And this is one day. This is one day. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going off a typical, you know, eight to uh, eight to ten hour wedding day. So, you, do you normally shoot with an assistant? 
I do, yes. Okay. So you have, let's say, 4,000. She has 2,000-ish. So 6,000 photos per wedding. How long does it take you to edit those? And how many are you presenting to the bride and groom? Uh, you know, typically the bride and groom, you know, what I, I, I relay to them is, you know, they're going to get 100 images per hour of coverage. So with that said, I always give, you know, more. It's, it's averaging about 1,000 thousand images to the client. Okay. And how do you give it to them? You you giving them a CD or a, or a DVD? Obviously, uh, it depends on the package. You know, I don't I don't give away all the files to everybody. Um, yeah. You know, it's a it's it's a additional cost. Um, you know, but depending on what wedding package I I end up having them go with. You, know. you should you should. Uh, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do here. I'm just coming up with an idea, <laughs> and it's not a unique idea. Other people have thought of it. Um, give them an iPad with the photos on it. I've heard of that. Yeah. And of course, included in the price that they pay. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, would, I would think a thousand pictures that you get, you're giving, that that's probably pushing the size of a uh, of an iPad. Well, you wouldn't give them full resolution because you want them to um, buy yeah, purchase them, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, even if you know, even at a thousand images, you know, um, I'm, you know, they would get JPEGs if they do get the CD. Then, right. You know, it's going to fit on one DVD usually, one or two. Right, and then and then they're buying prints off of that. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So, uh, did, did you say how long it takes you to edit those? I don't. Oh no. Um, you know, you asked what the the standard process is. I mean, it's you yeah. know, I come home from the wedding and I back everything up. You know, typically that night or the next morning, um, to at least two different drives for the disc. Um, you know, the JPEGs. Um, so I'll shoot raw JPEG on some weddings. Um, you know, that way they're they're double backed up, and uh, then from there it's. <laughs> three, three-ish hours to uh, just try to cull those images down to to a manageable number, um, and then I'll usually go through two rounds of of uh, knocking it down from six thousand to uh, to a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so now you've got it down. So that's three, three, four hours, whatever, uh, to get it down to a manageable number. You've culled the list. You've right. culled the shots. How how much time are you spend on each uh, in total? Maybe not each image, but editing those images and getting them ready to present to the client. You know, I can get through a wedding, um, you know, if it, it's, you know, in one day usually, um, you know, four to five hours. Four to five hours? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a matter of, not, not if I can sit there the whole time and do it, you know, it's... That's true. Usually, yeah. I, I'll break it up. I mean, you know, I have shoots going on almost every day, and, you know, I'll go out and shoot and then come back to it and, you know, pick up where I left off, because that's, you know, it's kind of a long time to sit from the computer. Oh, you're going to make a lot of people sick. <laughs> They're going to look at, you got a thousand shots. You spend four to five hours editing, and you get this kind of quality. Yeah, I mean, that I mean, the, the, the images are pretty much. I mean, at least for me, they're, you know, they're the exposures are already, you know, for the most part, are all dialed in. Um, yeah. So it's just a matter of you know using Lightroom to its to its full potential, and uh, you know, creating you know going through and creating a you know a couple of presets for the for that uh, that certain wedding, and, and just you know blasting through it. But Tim, you know, we talked before about how. Um, you know, one of the things we started the show, I wanted to have guests come on so I can learn from them and get better and, you know, enjoy their work and hear, you know, <laughs> hear them talk about it. The, the the one thing that has been a side effect is each show I realize how much I suck. <laughs> <laughs> how much further I have to go. Maybe let's, let's not say that. How much further I have to go. I mean, your images are inspiring. It makes you want to go out and shoot. And, yeah, I'm not going to get this kind of quality, but um, it gives you – you know, it's just, it really makes me want to go out and, and improve what I'm doing and try and get better out of the camera. And, you know, you don't rely so much on the post-processing because that, you know, you're, you're not, you're not earning that much money when you're sitting at your, your computer editing photos, you're earning your money when you're out there shooting for eight hours and working yeah. with the clients and other things. Exactly. Well, I just think about it. I go out and take 200, 300 pictures at a soccer game, and I'm lucky if I make it through in a day going through all my pictures, and he's going through several thousand. That's just... Well, he's, he's starting at 6,000. So I guess if you take yeah. the 6,000, the time it takes to call, then the time it takes to edit, it, that, that is almost equal to the amount of time it took to shoot. So eight hours of shooting equals roughly eight hours of culling and editing. If I got yeah, that's, that, not, that's, that's, not, that's not the standard... Uh, <laughs> You know what? What people usually say. It takes no, it's two not. Hours going. Yeah, but, that is fantastic. Yeah. You definitely have a um, a workflow down that is working for you. What kind of computer are you using? I'm using a uh, Mac Pro. Okay. 
Oh, Mac user. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Our apologies. <laughs> okay, so now now we're going into a whole different segment of um, photos. Here, I think I think I've got these in the right category. If I get if I got some mixed up, I apologize. But I tried to create different categories of, of images here. So you know, um, anybody who's a newborn photo photographer like Kathleen, this is where I'd love for Kathleen to be on tonight. Um, has done some composite shots. You know, where you have the the mother holding the baby in different locations, and then you take all the shots and, and composite them together, and it looks like there's nobody there. The the baby the baby was well protected, but you don't see that in the final image. Um, but I believe this is a composite, right? This is yes. So in you know, what we're going to be showing you here is not all composites, and this next list of, of photos we're going to go, be going through are not all composites, but they're they're mixed in there. And sometimes what's good is you can't tell which one's a composite, which one's not. So when we're doing a pre-show interview, I was trying to guess some of them. I, I wasn't always right. Um, so is this a you now? This is a goes along with your commercial shoots, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, I mean, this is shot in the studio. Uh, you know, I already had an HDR background. And, uh, you know, just bringing the client in the studio, and literally we took 20 shots. And I knew where, I already knew kind of, you know, how I wanted him to sit. I had a, had a laptop, you know, right next to me while, as I was shooting with this background already on it. So I was looking at the background, looking at the subject, um, you know, had him lean a little bit more to the left, right, and so forth, um, to, uh, to get that perfect positioning. So when you originally took the background shot, did you have the idea in mind that I might use this later for this kind of composite? Yeah, yeah, I knew I, I might want to use it, um, but, you know, it took, I mean, there was options for backgrounds that I had, but, you know, going through, uh, you know, I, I realized I could use this one for a certain application. Okay. Do you, do you uh, spend much time going out and just taking uh, images that you might think that, hey, maybe I could use this as a background later on? Not as much as I'd like. I mean, I'd like to be able to get out more. Yeah, because that's something like that'd be fun. When I have some free time, yeah, definitely. All right. This the, earlier in the pre-show. This is what I was talking about. The I think we have a, right. another one after this that's even more dramatic. But in this one, uh, you know, I love the light, but I love how the the golden uh, light, which I guess maybe is, is sunset, that's, is it, yeah, the late afternoon sun. It's not really going down yet. Um, okay. It's just kind of it's kind of you know, hitting that building off in the distance and creating this little flare right there. And I like how it's hitting the railroad tracks, the rails, and creating like two golden lines going right down that. Yeah, I mean, I try to stay away from railroad tracks, but it definitely worked with this artist. As Tad Worker, you guys should check out his music out there, tadworkermusic.com. It's a little shout out for Tad. Sure. Um, great, great musician. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know, it definitely worked for his uh, his EP. He's an acoustic um, acoustic musician. Uh, so it's you know, with the uh, yeah, guitar over his shoulder, walking away down the tracks. Yeah. So let's look at the next one. This was this one. Look at this one, Tim. This is the same guy, right? Yeah, same guy. Now, is this? I'm guessing. <laughs> let me guess and see if I get it right. I'm guessing it's not a composite. You're right. It's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but I can see where it could have been. I mean, uh, uh, is this HDR? No. Nope. Not it's HDR one, either. One single image. That's a great uh, shot. I like the clouds above it also. Yeah, so you look at, you know, the sun obviously blows out. It blows out a little bit of a shoulder, which adds to that. But you've got detail in the trains on either side, in the grass, and the sky. Uh, so what, now, how, how did he use this image? Uh, this was, I had a CD somewhere around here. Um, that this a, was the back. This is the back cover of his, uh, his latest album. Yeah, that is fantastic. That must feel good to see that on somebody's... Uh, on the back of some, a CD like that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> and is this, is this, uh, this one here, him again, it's coming up. That's that not a, uh, not a composite. No. Is, is that him again though? That's him. Yeah. Same. Okay. It's all the same shoot. Yeah. So now how do you have the grass lit up here? You have a flash on him or a, a... I'm guessing I do, yes. a yeah. flash. Yeah. It's a, uh, Battery-powered strobe. Uh, NSB 800 type? No. Okay. Uh, like an alien B? It was an alien B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. 
All right, this is where I was talking before about the the light, the rim light around, you know, how you got the the light rimming around him like that. And I like how I don't know what that the little particles are. Looks like he's cut out and just added in. It was this was during um one of his live shows to uh to promote the album. And uh, I don't normally like to post a lot of live show images; they all kind of look the same. But uh, I tried to create this one or create a little drama with this image and mm -hmm. uh, make it make it a little bit cooler than. Than normal and uh, basically there's a SB800 on a light stand probably 20 feet away from 15 20 feet on the other side of the stage and I'm just ducked down low enough to uh, you know, hide his head with that flash so that those little particles are just that's just the way the light hits them and reflects off like that yeah yeah I gotta imagine it when you're on the stage like that you know there's all kind of little dust particles and stuff floating right. around yeah. that you know normally you don't see because you don't have light hitting like that oh, but like Tim was saying when you first look at it it's like oh they, he did a bad job of cropping that guy out of whatever he had him in <laughs> and pasting him in there but you but I think as you look at it you know I, I as you look at it, you can see no that's a light behind him that's creating that edge and that really that's really cool and there's there the only light that's hitting him on the front portion of the image here is uh, just the stage lights. Yeah. yeah it's at a, Yoshi's is the name of the venue in San Francisco. Really good lighting. All right, I think I guessed this one right when we were uh, doing a pre-show interview. And I guessed it's not a composite. Okay. Right. Uh, is this Alien V also again? Uh, this is a pro photo. The same, yeah, same, same idea. Um, battery okay. powered strobe. And, and uh, who yeah, is she? Just a... Uh, this was a test shoot, actually. Oh, okay. Test yeah. shot. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, really, test shot. <laughs> I wish my good shots would look like your test shots. <laughs> okay, so you're out in the field. Um, you know, you got the dramatic sky behind her. You light her. How, how, fa or how long does it take you to get the lighting just right? Because I know if I was shooting with my SB800, and this is where I need to practice more. I mean, she would get bored and walk away before I'd get the light right. Um, I usually have my my settings dialed in in a situation like this within the first two shots. Dang. Yeah, I have, an, I have an idea. I have, a, I have an idea of where I want my starting point to be. Um, yeah. I have a, I have a starting point in my head, and uh, you know, generally, you know, we can get it dialed in within two shots. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's like you said, you didn't, you know, if you can, the sooner you can get your your settings dialed in with the subject with the talent, um, you don't want to lose them. You don't want to lose their focus, their their attention. Absolutely. And that's, you know, somebody like me has no business taking somebody like that out there. I need to be practicing in other ways for I would do that. Um, yeah, that one, that one obviously is not is not a composite. There were some I thought I had that were composites, but I thought were excellent composites. Let's talk about this one. This is not a composite, I, I would guess. No, not a composite. But I I love how, and this goes back to, you know, just letting it go to to, to black, letting it go to dark. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was there was other images in the series that. You know, I slowed my shutter speed down to bring in the ambient light that was coming down that that little uh, you know path right there along the wall. But um, you know, with this image right here, I cranked it up to you know two fiftieth the max the max uh, sync speed, and I just killed the ambient light behind it. And a, a, a question out in chat is: When you use um, outdoor studio flash with your Alien B, are you using a twenty four or forty eight inch umbrella, or I think you said you use a softbox though? Using a softbox in a lot of images. Um, I don't know if you grabbed. Uh, you know, we were talking about that other that image with the uh, the girl on the uh, the roof, in the with the city skyscape behind her. Let's see. Um, lately, I've been using a, a beauty dish as well. But yeah, I mean it'll oh, be. Oh yeah. Uh, got, okay, I got that one. Yeah. We'll have to go back through some of the ones I just. Oh, there through. you go. <laughs> this one. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a beauty dish right there. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this but is it's, a it's generally generally you know but it's twenty four inch the twenty four inch softbox in some applications. Um, and then others, I have the big 50-inch Westcott that I'll, uh, I'll take out. Okay. And this one obviously is a composite. I'm guessing. Yes. yes. I'm yeah. guessing it's a composite. So is it, were, this background, did you, is this another one you just took and said I might be able to use it later? Yeah, just a cool city skyline and yeah, figured, cool. I could, figured I could throw someone in there. I like this there one. Are times, there are times, though, that it's, you know, the the opposite idea. You know, you do go looking for mm -hmm. a background that'll work. But, right. you know, generally speaking, I'll have a background before I have the subject shot. I, I did find one shot that's kind of like, uh, it was a little bit different from all the rest. I'm hoping this is yours and I didn't pull somebody else's foot. No, I got your name up there. <laughs> Logan? <laughs> tell, tell, us the, tell us the story about this one. 
uh, this cool little kid right here. This, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, he has to stay a, a family shoot, and this was, you know, I probably was talking to the parents, and I looked over and you know saw his dog run up, and you know, it's just a, a cool little moment. Uh, this dog's this little guy's best friend, you know, and you know, caught the capture him right there, and you know, the green apple just happened to be there from the tree that he was sitting under, and uh, I thought it went well with the green grass and everything behind him. Oh, absolutely, that that worked perfect. So you didn't stage that; it all just happened on its own. Yeah, well, I mean. I had him sitting there. I had the apple there. I mean, he, he did at some point have the apple in his hand, probably tried to eat it. Um, but yeah, the dog ran up and you know, sipping the apple and he's looking down like, what is this dog doing? <laughs> I was going to eat that. Get away. Yeah. Oh, he'll still eat it. He's a little boy. Yeah. He doesn't care. The dog touched <laughs> it. Um, yeah, this one I just like because of the colors. I like the color of his shirt, the color of the background. Um, yeah, we were walking along in, in uh, downtown San Diego and came across a couple of different colored walls. There might be another shot up here uh, where there was an orange wall. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know if I got that one. I've got the orange wall. So I'm going I'm to – I know Scott Green. One of the things he wanted me to ask you is about how you lit your motocross shots because I think he's done some motocross shots. I wish he was out there in chat. He must have – he must be out he's shooting with Kathleen. Himself. He's out with Kathleen right now. Yeah. She sent me a text. Uh, She's not making it tonight. Yeah, this image right here and the other uh, the other motocross image um, were just lit with one SB hundred. Or maybe you, that might have been an SB nine hundred. Yeah, same okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. Just you just set it, set it up on a stand or something and let uh, him come by. Yeah, I mean I, that's on the top of this this hill, so I had to ride my dirt bike up too with him and uh, you know pulled off to the side and, and set it all up because I knew I'd been to this location before and I knew that sun was going to pop down behind that hill and. Uh, you know, it's going to create you know, this big open sky behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just, uh, just you know, giving it some fill flash, really, right there. Fantastic. So you knew you only had about 10 minutes to get that shot off. Exactly. That sun was, was about to go down, yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I, one of my shots that, um, that I like a lot is of our Swanee Town Center. And I, wanted to, I went up there about an hour and a half before sunrise, and I wanted to get as the sun was – peeking over the buildings and get that it wasn't HDR I didn't shoot at HDR but get the uh, the 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 city I mean the uh, town center there with it just peeking over the, the top so I found my spot I took a you know, number of test shots all this kind of stuff and I'm taking them as it's getting close the spot where it was at the perfect spot was maybe two minutes at the most yeah when that sun starts to drop it goes yeah. fast yeah. well and this was a sunrise so oh, like yes, a same, minute before, yeah, same difference, yeah. A minute before that, it wasn't peeking through. That A minute or two, it was, and then after that, it was too far over. Yeah. I mean, it goes by so fast, you've got to be ready. Um, so now, this I'm, guess, I'm guessing here, this is a composite. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah this is a composite. Um, this is a shot in the studio. Same, uh, same lighting setup. I use the same setup for, for, my, for my comp. Uh, use a three-light setup. Gridded soft boxes on the uh, the back, hitting you know, hitting our arms to give that you know that nicely lit, uh, you know, side light right there. And then uh, I used a 22 inch beauty dish on this. Okay. For the thank you light. And I just I know this is all you haven't done many hangouts, but I just got the warning that says, um, you know, am I still here? So you'll be getting a warning eventually, asking you if you're still here once we get to around the hour. If you don't click on it, it'll kick you out. So okay. just be looking for that. Um. Okay, and I, I don't I don't know how many of her I got, but I noticed that you shot quite a few of her, uh, and 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 you know emphasizing her tattoo. Right with the uh, well, yeah, and then he's, I used her for the uh, the comp, yeah, for the composites. Yeah, now she's not the same girl that was on the that's on the building, is she? Yeah. This one, she's yeah. that same girl there. No, that's different. That's a different okay. girl. Okay, that's what I thought. Are you talking about the building? Yeah, right there. I thought you were talking about the image that was on the right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the, the, yeah. so the building one with the umbrella is the same girl. Uh -huh. Same girl. Okay. Yeah, no, this one I thought was a different girl. Now, this one isn't composite, but it's just the yeah, lighting. Yeah, this, this, this is a different girl. Right the lighting is just fantastic again. I, I love still, the cloud detail in it. I mean. That is what, to me, is, is the lighting is so, um, is, is perfect where you, you still get the background detail. You're not, you're not losing that. It's not going to complete dark. She doesn't look like, you know, she's just been hammered with a flash. It's nice quality light. Yeah, and that's something I definitely, you know, strive to do is, you know, 
balance that light because, you know, that's what that sky looked like. Um, you know, it was it was about to go down, and uh, the sun was about to go down, and you know, bringing out that nice, you know, kind of reddish orange kind of hue um, with the sunsets. You know, something you can't do if you you know blast her with too much light, and you know. Right, that'll yeah. just turn black. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so I mean, my shutter speed right here. Um, if I didn't grab this image, I could have figured out the specs on it. But I mean, it was probably it was down to like fifteenth of a second, handheld. Hmm. So I'm I'm shooting very slow to try to get that. And that's handheld, wow. Handheld. I mean, there was there was shots with this series right here where that got down to you know tenth of a second. It was pretty it was pretty slow. Yeah. You know, now I made a mistake in that I was going to show, before we started showing your photos, I was going to show one of the photos I liked from my swim shoot, uh, the, the swim meet, let's put it that way, not a swim suit, shoot, but swim meet. Um, and now I don't want to You show. wish it was a swimsuit. <laughs> like, I'm not going to show my image now. There's no way it looks any good. <laughs> it's the one but, you had on Facebook. It's a very nice picture. Uh, thank you. I might, I might show it as we go to end, but... That warning that saying that we've been here an hour, um, you know, I don't want to abuse our guests, so hopefully they'll come back at some point. But how about we open up the chat? I know Jerry has been out there. Um, Mike, um, we've had a few people have been asking questions. I, I might have missed somebody else. So why don't we open it up the chat, and if you have any questions, we'll try and get them um, answered here. And then we'll wrap things up and come back for that little bit of the, the um, post-show thing that I was talking about. Maybe I'll go ahead and show mine while we're waiting. That's not mine. Ah, good. A couple of behind-the-scenes shots. <laughs> I think I only actually, when I say couple, I think I really just have two. Oh, well, that's a great shot. Yeah, with him d directing, telling people where so to go. So that's your assistant uh, taking the pictures, I guess? Yeah, standing back behind me. And, that's, you know, that's the thing. Um, how much time does, does he spend scouting locations? That is a great question. How much time you spend scouting locations? Because I am horrible at scouting locations. How much time do you spend scouting the location for your shots? You know, not that much time. Uh, generally, you know, when I'm driving around, when I'm out and about, I'm always, always looking at, at locations that could be possible, you know, possibly used for a shoot. Um, so, I mean, if I'm in the city, you know, I'm in San Francisco and I'm driving along, you know, just look over and, oh, wow, look at the light hitting that building on that alley right here. I make a little note in my iPhone. You know, uh, jot down, jot down, that and make sure I, uh, I get back to that spot. But um, if I have a shoe coming up, you know, that's you know, for for a client, for you know, a musician or you know, artist or somebody, then yeah, I'm gonna you know, about, about a week before, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna spend you know, an hour or two trying to find some new spots that are uh, you know, gonna be able to that I can apply to what they're looking for in their mm -hmm. shoe. So I mean, I'm not gonna shoot you know some. Somebody who wants, you know, obviously be shot out, you know, just hypothetically speaking out in the field or whatnot. I'm not going to go scout, you know, drive around downtown in an urban setting. Um, so, yeah, it's been usually an hour, two hours. Okay, and, you know, you mentioned the iPhone. One of the things I do, too, is um, with my phone, it's not an iPhone, it's a Galaxy, it's a Samsung Galaxy, is I will take photos uh, with it, with the GPS turned on, and then when I bring them into Lightroom, you know, the new Lightroom 4 has the map feature, and it's already yep. tagged them, and... Um, that way, it's it's a way for me because I don't always have my SLR with me, but it's a way for me to remember that's the location I want to go back to. I shoot I shoot way too many photos with my iPhone. I do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm on uh, Instagram shooting photos all the time. Yeah. Um, what settings do you use to upload your photos to make them so crisp online? Might never look. So you know, again, a lot of these are pulled right off of Facebook, and I think that's a, a problem that a lot of people have is for whatever reason you're uploading your images to Facebook and they do not look as good on Facebook as they look when you're editing them in Lightroom or Photoshop. Right. These, you know, and even my images don't, when I upload them to Facebook, I'm, the pixels are getting crushed. Um, so they don't look like they look on my blog or website by any means. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm making them 72 DPI. I'm you know, sizing them down to, uh, you know, usually around 900 pixels. Um, I just, you know, I really, I just size them the same way I do for my blog. Um, okay. And that's the standard setting. You know, I think it's 920 pixels by, um, you know, some odd number in uh, 72 DPI. You know, I can't remember now if Lightroom does this automatically or if it's just a setting. But obviously, anything you're going to be wanting to put on online, Facebook or wherever else, you want to convert the color profile to sRGB. That is, uh, that's definitely, 
that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, um, yeah. I found out the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, especially images that are outdoors that are have been lit. Um, you know that yeah. one of those last images that you shot or you showed with the uh, the sky, um, with those clouds. That was the girl against the fence. I yeah. mean that image right there. If if that was RGB, her skin will go green or it's gonna look all all out of whack. Because you, you're probably shooting. Um... You know, I shoot in Adobe RGB or Adobe whatever it's called. It's a pretty wide gamut. And then when I am editing in Photoshop, I'm typically editing um, our Lightroom in the Pro Photo. Yeah, um, it's it's just it's important that we you, you do export or you do um, go into Photoshop uh, that you maybe make a copy of that image. And when you make a copy, you you know change your settings to sRGB. Yeah, especially if you're outputting to Facebook, so you or yeah, something like that, you're gonna want definitely. to. So here, so here's one of my shots. People have had long enough time not seeing one of yours um, that I took at the, at the thing with the 7200 2.8, and I, I don't remember how far I was out, but this was. It, I don't, you probably can't tell how sharp it is here, but it came out really good and sharp. And the key here was I was just shooting around, not paying much attention, because there's like a thousand people here. It's just absolute chaos with kids running all over the place and coaches and everything. And all of a sudden, you know, this little boy is his first, his first time out uh, at a swim meet, and he was nervous. And, of course, what people were doing was cheering him on, which just made him more nervous. So as he's standing there getting ready to, you know, jump in and, and do a swim, and you can kind of see people on the, on the other side. All of a sudden, the, 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 it parted. Uh, people moved out of the way, and it was just one shot. And there was people below him. I couldn't go any lower because there were people below him. And I was able to get that one shot. And then, of course, my wife, when she sees that, she goes, oh, yeah, that's a good shot. Too bad he's not on our team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that kid is. He's on somebody else's team. He's on the other team. Like, what the heck? <laughs> I got to delete that. Or it's, or I was about to say crap. I just won't use it. But uh, and I was going to get rid of his name. She said, ah, there's so many kids there. Every parent would just think of somebody else's kid. I'll just remove his name from his back. And it, it turned out he was one of our kids, so it's <laughs> that turned out all right. <laughs> That's funny. It's not our kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, okay. Next question is: You say you use in-camera white balance, no, no Expo this, no um, gray card, no gray card or anything like that. Are you using auto white balance, or how are you setting no, your white I, balance? No, I, I never use never use auto white balance. Um, you know, if I'm outdoors, uh, you know, I'm shooting uh, with no no light, no strobes. Um, then I'm shooting with uh, I'm trying to create a you know warmer image. So I'm using a cloudy white balance even on sunny days. Okay. Um, that's something people should probably try. Uh, definitely, it'll warm the image up. Um, and that's this, I love the skin tones that come out, especially with the the D3s and the D4 um, with those with those uh, those in camera settings. However, uh, you know, if I'm in the studio, then I'm shooting with a flash white balance on okay. the camera. Yeah. Do you ever use just the um, the Kelvin settings? You know, yes and no. Um, a handful of times I've had to uh, in certain certain uh, you know reception venues for weddings. Uh, there'll be some kind of crazy pink blue lighting, you know, uh, depending on whatever they have, and uh, you don't have to really get it dialed in with Kelvin. Um, but for the most part, I'll, you know, I I just know what the image is going to look like now with with enough test shots that I've done. You know, when I first got each of these cameras. Uh, that I know what the white balance is going to, how it's going to react to the image. Very good. And um, somebody said something about the shot. i got to find the parents. I'm sure I'll see them next week. Um, so I, I actually in two days is when that happens. So we'll see. It's, up, it's, up, it's actually somewhere where they can buy it if, or get it for free. I'm doing that for free. It's my kid's team. I don't, I don't charge. So uh, we need to be wrapping things up here. Any last questions before we wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for coming out to the chat and Kathleen, I got a text during the show. She's going to be so upset she missed you. <laughs> she um, yeah, apparently she had a rough day um, and the show it slipped her mind so she's really upset that she's missed you and she's going to be more upset when she goes through and see all these these, uh, these photos and um, hopefully she'll be back next week. So, let's see. Uncle Silly, your pics are epic. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm not quite sure what Uncle Silly is. 
I don't know. Maybe Thanks we're for the kind comments, everyone. Maybe we're get, we are streaming live to Facebook. And somebody, we somebody that knows me must be uh, jumping on there. Oh, is that you? Are you Uncle What's Silly? The name? What's the name on there? Oh, Jerb. Uh, that's Jerb. that. You know who that is? That's the uh, that's the little boy with the the apple and the dog. <laughs> Wait, the little. The, he looked like he was four, three. No, he's he's like he's like one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> They're learning real fast, Mike. He's yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a smart kid. Yeah, wow. He's already coming on like podcasts and watching podcasts and, and typing messages. He can probably spell better than me. Uh, so, you know, um, as you know, we streamed a bunch of his photos here. You looked at a bunch of his photos, but I, they don't do justice to what you'd see on the site. And I can only pick a few. So, you know, go out to the site. We'll have his, his links in, the, in the, um, the show notes. Go out to Sylvan's. Did I say it right again? Sylvan's, Got it. Yes, you did. The Sylvan's website, and we'll have them in the show notes. And check out his photos. Just fantastic. He has a lot more there that you can see and in a better quality than what I can stream here. Um, and, you know, thank you for coming on the show. I was so thanks glad to me. get you. Yeah, good times. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me on here. Yeah, and you have a Facebook group, so you can go and, you know, you go out there and like his Facebook page and kind of follow him and see what he's doing. He's always always shooting uh, with 38 weddings or, or so a year. You got something going on all the time. Yeah, I'm always I'm always on about you know, trying to shoot different things too. You know, I mean, get out and you know, like shooting the wakeboarding, you know, motocross, and all of that as well. Well, and your commercial shoots just you know, the that the shots that I saw there were just fantastic. That I hope that really grows for you. Well, thank and you. Um, you know, if I was the guy that had that that back cover, you know, I'm looking for you next time I want a photo. <laughs> <laughs> that was just fantastic. Um, as I'm sorry. Oh, not good. I was no. As we head as we head out, I want to remind everybody to, you know that the show is available on Stitcher and YouTube and iTunes, and on our site, you know you can get the auto feed or two different video feeds. Uh, one's a little bit larger than the other one. Neither one is HD. You know these Hangouts are not in HD. Uh, if you do listen to us through iTunes, go out there and leave a comment on iTunes. We had somebody, I think uh, her username or his could be he. Busy B just recently left us a nice comment on there. So if you would go out to iTunes and leave us a comment. It, generally, it's better if we consolidate them into one of the feeds, like the audio feed, and leave us a comment there. And don't forget to, uh, as you're leaving the show tonight, don't do it yet, but as you go to leave the show, there should be a Google, Google ad below the chat. If you just click on that, it gives a little bit of credit. You don't have to buy anything it takes you to or anything, but don't do it because now it will take you away. Next week we'll be back with um, another guest. I, I I think it's Jody Otto or Adi. Yep, is next week, and we have a lot of great guests coming up. And through the summer, you can check our website. We have a calendar in the forums, which lists all you know the people who are coming up as I book somebody. I put them there so you can always know who's coming up next. Uh, this show should be available within a couple of days, and we'll have it uh, ready for you. To, to, to get it, best way to get it and the soonest way to get it is to subscribe to the show. If you have any questions, any comments, or have any guest suggestions, you know, we found Sylvan because of Scott Green suggesting uh, him as a guest. Send me an email at jpeg to, podcast at jpeg to raw com. We recently got one just yesterday, Tim, suggesting a, a guest. And as I, you know, put them in our list and looked them up, yeah, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to those. So, you know, we're always looking for great guests like Sylvan, so send us a note and so, you know, give us a, who you'd like to see on the show next. And with that, we'll end the show. We'll come right back to Sylvan, so hang out, and, and we'll do the, the after show. Sounds good. Um, everybody out there in chat, we had a lot of new people watching tonight. Thank you for coming, and hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll see you again next week when maybe even Kathleen will be here. <laughs> back so, to rehab. Everybody out there in chat, we'll see you uh, next good week. Night, good night, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.